Hi everyone, welcome to the next coaching video from the Street Defence Combat Conditioning YouTube channel. So today's subject, I see you'll see on the thumbnail, is um, the sofa. Uh, due to multiple lockdowns and so on, obviously that have been going on for way too long now, uh, a lot of people have actually got used to watching TV a lot more than perhaps they would have done had we not had a pandemic. Some people have even completed Netflix. Uh, some people even need a new sofa uh, uh, after literally buying one about a year ago. Uh, and obviously spending so much time on it, they need to get another one, which obviously is not, not a good sign. So what we need to do is we need to try and get people to start to think about earning that sofa. Getting to the point where in the evening you've accomplished everything you've set out to do that day. And then you feel like you've earned the right to sit on that sofa. Rather than getting from work and just slob straight onto the sofa and think that's it, I'm done till bedtime. So what we want to try and do is look at different areas and how we can sort of improve that over time. And let's get straight to it. So let's start with the actual problem itself. Obviously, the first thing we've got to look at is time. So the time management for our day. So if you start to think eight hours roughly obviously for sleep, uh, if you go into work at the moment, obviously you might be working from home, but obviously eight hours potentially obviously working as well. So that's 16 hours. That leaves us eight hours. If you are traveling to work, that probably would gonna take an hour and a half each way. So you say another three hours is gone there as well. So you're 19 hours with five hours left. So you start to see how the time you can actually start to lose that. But obviously thinking about if, you've, if you're desk bound in your job, obviously you lay down obviously when you sleep, you sit down in your car when you go to work, you sit down at your desk at work, you sit back in your car to get home from work, and a lot of people sit at their dining room table to eat their dinner and then they sit on the sofa until bedtime and then they go back to lay, lay de laying down again. So you can see how that can actually massively decrease activity levels. And I think especially with people that have been working from home, obviously there's a lot more people at the moment, you've actually got more time. So obviously you've got no zero travel, so that's two to three hours extra a day, yet people are actually still finding it hard to be active. Um, so obviously there's so many different activity things that people can do. Uh, I sort of think that people always believe that you should go running to get fit and healthy. Uh, I know a lot of people that run three, four times a week. Some people spend half an hour every day on a treadmill. I ask them, you know, uh, uh, do they like running? They say no. Uh, and the other question I ask them is, are you running for an event or like a 5K sort of charity run? No. So the what I would say to them is just don't do it. There's so many other so many other things you can do. Obviously you've got cycling, you can go for power walks, obviously you can go just like long, sort of steady pace walks. You've got obviously with things opening now, because obviously we've had so long where things have been shut, obviously social distancing and this that and the other, except for loose trousered MPs. Um We've, we can actually start to do things now. So we can start to go and perhaps go like rock climbing or climbing walls, obviously indoor, things like that. Also, you can go back into gyms. You've got gym classes, dance classes, martial arts, and so on. So I think the key is to find predominantly one, at least of those sort of activities, things you actually enjoy. And to be honest, everyone thinks you've got to be good at things as well. Why not just sort of learn it because you love doing it? You know, you, everyone's got to start from somewhere. Uh, and obviously as well, I think a good idea is to try and mix and match a bit. So not perhaps to go health for leather. If it is running that you choose to do, don't just go, right, I'm going to do running five days a week. Okay, obviously you could do running once or maybe twice a week and then maybe join a, a martial arts class you've always loved the thought of doing. Just go and do it. You might do that once, possibly twice a week. Or it could be playing a sport, a team sport that you think you used to do when you was at school and you'd love to try it again. There's so many opportunities out there, I think, to be active. And I think it's just a matter of just getting out there and doing it. And obviously that will give you some sort of reason to be fit and healthy as well as obviously just for just your general health and obviously living longer and being healthier and so on. So I think it's good to have a focus of something that you can actually work towards being fitter and better at. Um, so a lot of people that like running or sports or things like that, when they start to uh, play and do those sort of sports, they obviously want to get better at it. And obviously to be healthier, whether it's a bit of weight loss and so on, that can only actually help that and enhance that as well. So try and focus on doing things that are more active and things you enjoy in the evenings, whether it's straight from work or you come home, have some dinner and so on, and then a little bit later on go out and obviously do that activity. 
I think people just need to sort of use their time better. And I think that's where the sofa's the easy option because obviously you get in from work and it's just easy. The sofa's looking at you. <laughs> you've had your dinner. You are going to be tired because obviously if you've been up, uh, up and about early from say seven o'clock or whatever, been traveling on trains or on the motorways and so on, the time you get back, you are going to be a bit tired. But obviously if you've got to think how long have you been sitting down for? And I think that's when the key is to look at your activity levels through the day and like a lot of clients obviously all my clients that I work with obviously initially I'll get them to start with food diaries also look at activity diaries as well actually start to look at how much time do you spend not sitting down whether it's in the car um, obviously lying down in bed or sitting on your sofa and so on you'd be surprised in some cases some people spend very very little time being active and on their feet and obviously because you're tired when you get in in the evening, the natural thing is just to switch the TV on and just watch the television and just sit on your sofa for three, four hours. And predominantly, people are spending three to four hours at least on t- or watching their TV in the evening. So that's taking into account that's people that potentially work all day as well. So you can see that's going to take them straight up to bedtime and then sleep, get up, and then the cycle turns around again. So the big thing is, You've got to go through each of these stages, which we'll go through now, and work out how we can get you to the point where you feel like you've earned that sofa, where you can get into the evening and you've accomplished things, you've done worked well, you've you've been uh, active, done some great exercise and so on, and then you get to the point where like an hour or so before you're going to get start to get ready for bed or whatever, you feel like actually I've earned the right to get on that sofa. Let's go for it. So the big change, obviously, with this pandemic that's brought about, uh, a lot more people obviously are working from home. Some uh, people are having the option of like a bit of a hybrid approach, whether they work two days a week at the office and three days at home and so on. And I sort of think we, uh, the, these sort of workers should sort of take advantage of that, especially if you're given the option of having a bit of a mix and match. And I think that will allow you to actually build in activity into your day, into your week. And obviously, from a business point of view, the the companies that you work for is really of interest, really, because obviously the healthier you are, it's scientific fact that you're going to be more productive, you're going to be sick less, therefore you're going to cost the company less money by spending more time off work and so on. So it's a bit of a knock-on effect. So the key with the hybrid approach, obviously the days, perhaps if you do travel a lot into work and so on, it's a bit of a mission to get into work. Obviously, that's going to eat into the time during your day and that's going to give you a lot less time to be active. But obviously, if you've got a bit of a mix and match where you've got two or three or maybe even more days at home working, obviously try and use that extra time that you've now created by not travelling to and from work to exercise. And I'm not saying use to train two or three hours. I mean, I'll be honest, even for my own training, I do, I'd say about 30 to 40, 35, 40 minutes a day. And I'd say, but it being really intense, but I train at home. That's all I need to do. I do my shadow boxing and core and body weight, calisthenics and this, that and the other. So I do sort of mix it up to keep it varied. Um, but that's all I do. And literally it's intense. It's done out of the way. But also that being said, so obviously from a workout point of view, that's 30, 35, possibly 40 minutes of like intense training. I still want to be as active as possible around that. So I don't just mean do half an hour a day and then that's it for 23 and a half hours. Just sit on your sofa, sit at your desk and lie down in bed. So I want you to try and be active around that and keep up and doing things and so on until you feel you've got to the point where you do need to relax and recover in the evening. And obviously because we do need recovery, so obviously because we are working, obviously it's the mental side, the mental being mentally drained from like work and so on, like emails and phone calls and meetings and so on. And that does obviously take its toll as the day goes on. Um, but obviously we do need to just sort of, especially the first couple of weeks of making this change, you're going to need to force yourself to do it. There's no doubt about it because it's obviously a habit change. And obviously, if you've been in a bad habit for a sustained period of time, it can take a little while to crack that habit, that bad habit. So you're going to need to probably reinforce it over a couple of weeks and just literally just just go and do it. So literally, as soon as you get in, don't even think about doing it, not doing it, whatever. You just go off and do that activity or you do your workout at home or you go for a long walk or so on. And I think as well that activity whatever it is you choose to do it takes your mind away from your work or normality or whatever or anything that might be going wrong in your life as well it just takes you away and I'll be honest when I do exercise I feel that 
it actually stimulates my brain more. So sometimes you can hit a brick wall with something you're trying to create. So things obviously with my YouTube channel that I'm trying to do and build for the future. Sometimes like anything, you can start to hit a bit of a brick wall. Uh, and sometimes just taking that step out, doing half an hour or more of activity and just taking you away from that problem. I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the time during or even after that workout, I feel so much more stimulated. I tend to solve the problem that I had before the workout. So actually my work benefits as well from me doing that. So really focus on looking at trying to use and get that balance now in your work life. So if you are working from home, try and use that time and obviously don't use that extra time just to sit on your sofa even more. Okay, so try and focus on you've got that extra time and use it. If you haven't got the luxury of that and obviously you're still going to work in the office or whatever on the road or so on, obviously you're just going to have to try and fit that half an hour in when and where you can, whether it's before work, whether you could do something at lunchtime, whether your office is you've got a gym in there or anything like that, or as soon as you get in from work, if you're going to cook some food that takes sort of 30 minutes to cook, obviously pre prepare it, get the cooker on, put the timer on, that's your half an hour. So while that's cooking, you do your workout. As soon as you finish your workout, food's ready, bang, you've actually, so you've, you've actually used your time better. So you've trained whilst your food's cooking, so rather than just sitting there waiting for it to cook, train eat your food, then you've got your evening where you can get yourself ready for tomorrow or do any other things you need to do, and then you get to the point where you've earned the right for that to be on that sofa. So let's move on to the next one. So the next trick, which I've already mentioned a little bit earlier, is to find an activity or activities, which I prefer more than just one activity, to get yourself more active and get yourself going again. Like I said, there are so many options out there. Obviously, you can be restricted with time, obviously, because obviously if it's something you're not gonna do within the home, and obviously you've got to go out there, obviously, whether it's joining the gym, so obviously the gym's got to be at a certain distance, but then you might save time and obviously do that straight after work, or during your lunch, if you've got a gym near your, your workplace as well. Um, but also, if it's an activity, it depends, obviously, what is actually available around you. I do know I've had clients before that have suddenly thought oh, I'd love to sort of do a dance class and then they look up online and there's nothing really near or perhaps it's a style of dance obviously they have got they don't it doesn't really suit what they want to do and so on so you sort that that's going to take a bit of research and I think that's what you can do I mean the first sort of few days it's trying to look at where you're at so that's like I said with food diaries activity diaries what activities you like the sound of and I'll be honest just try it if you can go to one, a lot of sessions and activities anyway, they, they, they will give you a, a free session on your first lesson or class or whatever. So use that option. Just research three or four different things and actually obviously contact them, obviously see if there's like a free trial or anything like that just to see if it's something you like doing and then just go for it. And, and obviously if you feel a bit nervous about it, just drag another friend or family member down and obviously just to go with you maybe that first time to just make you feel comfortable. And obviously it could, it could be something, I don't really like this, and obviously that's fine, you don't have to do that and just go to something else the following week or so on. But obviously in time, you guarantee you will find something that you like. And like I said, a few people I know that do a bit of a mixture of things. So, you know, some like I said, they do running like once or twice a week. Um, they play like tennis once a week. Um, and then they might go to like a dance class a couple of times a week as well. So they've got a real mixture of things. And to be honest, that makes it less boring. Um, because obviously when you just do one thing, unless you absolutely love doing it and you never have a, a day where you don't fancy doing it, that's fine. But a lot of people struggle with, they can get into something, but obviously what they do is they overdo it. They do so much of that that activity because obviously they're getting into it. Obviously they see it starts to make changes. But then obviously if it's something like running, when they're doing it every day, they might be overtraining and obviously putting their bodies through a lot of stress depending on the distances and obviously their physical makeup, obviously tension in calves and you know uh, mobility and any uh, old injuries they had and so on that have not been corrected. So there could be a lot of things that could affect them. And obviously sustainable-wise, sustainable, sustainable -wise, it might not actually get to the point where they can continue it. They might have to have a week off because they're injured or, or so on. So you can see, and it, as well, some people just have a phase where they're on something for a few months and then afterwards they get a bit bored of it and so on. But I guarantee if you don't do it as frequently and you mix it with other things, you're more likely to want to continue it. And I think once you start to do activities, if you did get bored with one or more of those, you're probably going to get used to being, getting into a bit of a swing of just 
just picking another activity and trying out something different as well. So I think that's the key to attracting you to do something more in your evening, or especially earlier even than just sitting on the sofa. I think people need to get out and about a lot more. Uh, and especially the pandemic, I think, has made a lot of people get used to sitting down at home. Um, and I've got friends that are very good at it. I, I think, to be honest, if the Tokyo Olympics had a new event for sitting on a sofa, my, a couple of my friends would be potential gold medalists f for, for Great Britain. So they haven't done that, but obviously they're gonna, we're going to need to start getting people off the sofa uh, as much as we can because obviously people have got so used to doing that due to obviously gyms being shut and obviously classes not being on and so on. So the next thing what I tell you to do is to try and focus on finding a few activities. Look at your activity levels of what you do in your day and your week. And obviously that can change at like weekends and obviously during the week as well. So, but list that down as well. Just see where you're going wrong. And you, sometimes you might be quite shocked at how low your activity levels are on certain days. So it's obviously in your interest is to increase that activity by finding activities that you like to do then get to the point where when you get in, you are ready and you've earned the right to sit on that sofa. And then obviously beyond that, we can over the coming weeks and months, we'll start to move on to some different areas and things like motivational things and mindset and things like that as well, which is important to help get you in the right frame of mind to not just get fit and healthy, but to stay that way as well, which is the big thing that I, I strive for in, in my work is that I don't want to just do quick fixes with people. I want to help fix people, but forever. So the point where they don't yo-yo and obviously they start to get the point where they're seven, eight out of 10 from a health point of view throughout the year. And obviously if they ever need to crank it up for a holiday or anything like that, is to tweak a couple of bits for a few weeks and then they'll be in exactly the shape, like pinnacle of where they want to be and so on. Even athletes don't are not in peak condition all year round. So for just your general public to attempt to do that, you can see why a lot of people can struggle with that. And that can actually affect motivation in the end because obviously to keep that up through the year whilst holding down a 40-hour week job and looking after children and so on, it's gonna they're going to really struggle. So there's sort of things we're going to get on. So take that as an action plan. Try and focus on your activity levels. Obviously, food diary always, you should be doing that and tweaking it and so on. And obviously, start to research the activities that you've got in the area and things you can do. It hasn't got to be gym-based. It can be absolutely anything. If it's something that's going to get you moving, get you motivated and get you off the sofa in the evening, then it's a good thing. So... Any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or feel free to visit the website. And obviously there's a, a, a contact page on there as well. So you can contact me through the, the section on there. But otherwise, other than that, stay fit, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.